Hello everyone, hope you're all well. I am here today to film a, I don't want to say it's going to be a new series, but I feel like I still really want to film YouTube videos. Hopefully, if anything, during this time it might make me film a bit more just because I have all that extra time that I'm not running to go here or running to go there. So if anything, I'm hoping that during this time my YouTube kind of kicks up a bit and I'm filming a bit more videos than I normally would. But content wise, it's probably not gonna be my normal content. I have no, no desire to look fashionable, wear anything crazy. I'm wearing like gym clothes pretty much every day. It's just not gonna be authentic if I'm there like, oh, this is like my outfit or whatever. I'm still kind of doing my makeup. This is literally how I've been wearing my hair pretty much every single day on my day off. I feel like it's so, liberating and I still feel a bit neat and you know put together but my hair is out of my face and you know I'm not kind of looking crazy but I thought today I would do a video that I have always kind of wanted to film but again just never got round to and that is a tips on studying video I think I'm going to call this little series like a quarantine diaries maybe someone's already kind of called it that uh, if I'm stealing anyone's show I'm sorry I'm really not watching that much YouTube at the moment anyway. I'm kind of trying to keep myself out of the internet. Just to give you guys a backstory, I've done university, I've graduated, I have a master's degree and everything, like I'm done. Um, I've also then done something called pre-registration year where we have a big exam in pharmacy and you have to study and work at the same time. I was doing like 40 plus hours a week, just like a normal job. And then I did like a huge exam at the end. So I feel like I'm now at 27, quite well equipped on knowing how studying works for me it might not work for everybody so my tips might not necessarily be perfect for you but you might gain something out of this and i feel like i only learned how to study in my best years at university funnily enough um or even maybe rather in my pre-reg year i feel like my college and gcscs were kind of just like a bit of a fluke and i feel like now i really know what works for me First thing I would say in terms of knowing, you know, how to study and begin to study is know your course syllabus. I'm currently studying uh, for a postgrad course. It's called a prescribing course for non-medical prescribers. And we, it's a six month course and we were given a timetable at the beginning. And once you know what your timetable is, you do, I would really highly recommend a diary. This is my 2020 diary. I do use this for both work and for university at the moment. And what this does is it just gives you a bit more of a timeline. So as opposed to kind of just willy nilly, not knowing what's going on, like when is my deadline due for this? What needs to be in at this time? I feel like having a diary and also a printed timetable. I can't show you guys like my timetable, but this is my timetable for my course. And because I feel like in my pre-reg video, um, I got in trouble for copyright because I was showing like front covers of books. I wasn't even showing the insides. So I have to be really careful in this video. Essentially have your timetable in front of you and kind of sit and work out, okay, when does this assignment have to be in if your course is more of like a coursework kind of based module or when is my exam gonna be like around? So I know that my exam, for example, is in June. I think my exam is the 20, let's have a look at my timetable, shall we? I think my exam is the 26th of June. Yeah, no, 25th of June rather, um, which now will be online. It's weird, is that a plus or a minus? I don't know, what do you guys think? It's a little bit weird to think that I will have to have an exam online, but essentially I know that I will need a minimum of a month or so to really start revising. My exam is based mainly upon pharmacology, but also the lectures that we had to attend for uni. So I kind of get an idea as to what I need to revise. Also, in terms of exam, I would say try and manage your revision time. I remember during pre-registration year when I was still working, I had to take time off work, obviously, because I needed to uh, take some quality revision time. And I remember I barely went on holiday, I barely took any time off, and I tried to group all my holiday time for before my exam. So I know that's probably a little bit hard, especially if we're talking in terms of a course where you're working and studying, whether or not your employer would give you you know, a saturated amount of time to revise, but try and plan your revision time. How long do you normally need to revise? So I think in all I had over two weeks. I can't remember exactly how much I had, but I, I definitely remember I was very lucky and I got given 
a really big chunk of time and I did sort that out with my obviously employers at the time but for some people two weeks might be too much before an exam some people might not only need a week or so or a weekend in some cases I definitely needed more so definitely set that time apart and figure that out don't plan every single holiday of your life before your exams and then you have no time to study I would then say invest in organizational type apparatus <laughs> or uh, organizational type equipment um, or desk uh, desk stuff uh, why can I not use my words today so I would say sometimes the only thing that keeps me really motivated to study is it sounds really ridiculous it might just be a barber thing but if my notes and my things look pretty um, I am more likely to go and you know go towards them and want to study so I would say yes like although this I think I got this from paper chase this folder was probably a little bit more expensive than like a WH Smith like red purple folder. It kind of motivates me because all, it kind of goes with my surroundings in my room. It's not super hideous looking and I'm able to kind of customize it. So as I said, this is from Paper Chase. This is what I wrote on mine. You can obviously make this look way better. I just wrote on it. Um, but this is my contents of my modules or you know type of things that I have to do for my course then you open it and I have like little tabs for each thing that I had to do so I did have a maths exam then to show you guys I will be having an OSCE which has been deferred and OSCE is basically where we have to the teachers pretend or the lecture I always call them teachers lecturers have to pretend to be patients and we have to treat them and obviously we can't do that at the moment um, this is my pharmacology notes because I know that pharmacology is one of the topics that's the main thing in my exam so I decided to separate them from my other lecture notes this is just my lecture notes section so you kind of see I try and really group everything together again for the purposes of copyright I can't actually like sit and show you a lecture slide that I've been given from my university uh, because of that but can you imagine you have a lecture slide that's how things kind of work in the UK we get given lecture slides I'm not sure if that's like in every country um, for university but some people uh, like to just make their own notes during lectures so if you attend your lecture some people like to just make their own I mean I can show you like physical notes this for example is a copy of the kind of notes that I would make um, I personally like to if I'm going to a lecture I like to have the slides already printed because it means that I can home in on the slides that are important and sometimes if you have lecturers that are a little bit cheeky or a little bit helpful they might tell you this is a section that could potentially come up in your exam that normally means it will let me tell you and what I normally do is I star that um, lecture slide and I kind of remind myself this was important I can show you guys my own personal notes my printer hadn't printed out my lecture slides properly so uh, I had a few missed pages of lecture slides so this was actually notes that I taken in my lectures um, as I said my lectures slides were not printed out properly so it just meant that I had to just go ahead and make my notes and yes I am super weird and I just like wrote on there highly examinal lecture uh, highly examinable lecture but I remember just the lecturer sitting there and going this could potentially come up in your exam and I always know that that means it probably will so this means that when I look at revision I will very very much so look at this lecture and really home in on it I think this lecture was on antimicrobials rather than do that I also like I said really do like making notes from lecture slides and I am one of those weird people that when I do revise, I do like to make other notes. So, for example, if I have a lecture slide and we have gone over them in a lecture, I do then like to go ahead and make another page of notes. It is a little bit extra because I'm going to show you guys something that I've really, really found helps me in revision. But it's weird. I do like to have pretty notes even though I will never ever look at them again and I probably just will revise from my lecture slides but I do like to sit there and make a note of whatever I've learnt and I feel like it kind of goes in my brain. So in all I do tend to normally try and revise a couple of times on a certain topic. So a good thing that I also used to do for university and I do less now because I don't have the time but I do remember that when I was being really good I used to come back home from a lecture and kind of go through the lecture again 
and make notes and then obviously when I went to revise that would be me revising yet again. Now being in the situation that I'm in I don't have time to copy and copy notes and that's how I used to revise in college and uh, for GCSEs. Like I just used to sit there and make notes after notes and then rewrite my notes and recopy my notes and recopy my notes and it really didn't used to stick for me. Um, what I have found and what I used to do a lot, a lot during revision for my pre-registration exam is a whiteboard. Let's say I'm studying about pharmacology. Pharmacology compromises of two different subsections that I'm going to be talking about just now. So we have pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. I really like is that even legible probably not listen it's hard holding this thing up so pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug i would make this look prettier if i was doing it on a table and pharmacodynamics is what the drug does to body and these in themselves have different subsections. Obviously, I'm going to, let's say, now go and delve into what pharmacokinetics is. So there are four general things that you have to look at when you're thinking about pharmacokinetics. And the acronym for that is ADME. Any other pharmacists or pharmacologists or whatever <laughs> with me here? This is very basic. I'm just literally just showing you guys the kind of thing that I would do. So first thing is absorption. Next thing is distribution of drugs. Then it's metabolism that occurs mainly in the liver and excretion, which is mainly by the kidneys. And as I said, you can go like further into this. You can, um, you know, make more bullet points if you've got a bigger whiteboard, but I'm quite limited here. So then what I would go and do is sit and talk about, okay, what is each thing? So absorption is the absorption of the drug. It can be orally, it can be uh, transdermally, it can be IV. Uh, and then I would sit and talk about each one. So let's do that, for example. So IV has 100% bioavailability because you are bypassing drug metabolism because it's going straight into your bloodstream. Then we have... I hope none of you guys go and be like, Bari, you should start a revision channel, because no, <laughs> no way. Um, although I do think I would like teaching, but I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm very well equipped. Um, then you can talk about uh, which drug routes are the most favourable or why they're most favourable in a certain situation. But you can have lung absorption, oral absorption, behind passage absorption. So you can go through each one and say what the pros and cons of each. So is it the fact, for example, that the back behind passage has a lot of um, blood supply. You can literally go and delve into each of these sections as much as you want. But what I would do after this, for example, is, is then I would go, okay, let's talk about absorption. So every single section of your notes, you are going through them thoroughly and you are almost sitting there and teaching them to yourselves. This is literally the only way that I found that I take things in. Otherwise, I'm just rewriting notes, rewriting notes, rewriting notes. Another thing I would say is YouTube videos. I personally like to learn with pictures and diagrams. Let me show you guys my notes because I had a really good pharmacology thing that I um, found on YouTube that taught you on how enzymes and substrates work, also um, receptors and ligands and things like that, antagonists, drug antagonists, drug agonists, just made sense. And sometimes having visuals, like I remember sitting in my pre-reg exam and being able to picture something that I'd learned or even like a slide, I sometimes found that I could picture them in my exam. Um, but having pictures of a certain situation or mechanism that you have to learn really helps. So again, here, for example, I've got an example in practice. So this is about salbutamol. People who are asthmatic are not recommended to take propanolol or beta blockers because of ABCD. Um, again, I'm not sitting here and teaching you guys stuff because I'm probably getting tongue tied and nervous and I always feel like I don't know anything and I, I shouldn't be teaching anyone anything. And I've got here an example of how aspirin is metabolized. So I know that there's phase one and phase two metabolism and what happens at each step. And these are the kind of pictures and images that really help me when learning. I hope so. you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know whether or not my tips were even helpful but it gives you guys an idea of how I like to study 
and I'd love to know how you guys like to do it. I know a lot of people like to, when I was doing pre-reg, I would just pace up and down. I would forget the, the, the board and I would just pace up and down and teach myself my lectures. So there's a lot of different ways to do things. I've definitely gone off the memorizing route and I try and actually apply the knowledge of what I've learned to specific things that I'm learning about. I am gonna be coming back with more. Let me know what kind of things you'd like me to do. I can even do topics, so like talking about relationships, talking about friendships, talking about X, Y, Z. I was thinking of doing a whole video dedicated to my pre-reg experience and like talking through it. I just have a few ideas just to pass time and to make some content that I probably wouldn't make otherwise. They will all be casual, they won't be with like fancy lighting, I won't be dressed up. I hope you're all doing really well, I love you guys all lots and let me know what you guys do in the comments and what you guys are studying and what's happened with your courses and I will see you all soon. Bye!